right. Um, I tell you what, there's nothing like when the family comes together and we just uh, start our day together. And, and uh, I tell you what, when, when our children had become Christians and to see that uh, how our dynamic changed um, as not only parents, the children, for they always will be our children. Um, when it became disciples, we became brothers as, 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 and sisters to way that we get, we encourage one another in, in our hearts. So it, it was great. Ephesians chapter three, verse 14. He says this, for this reason, what, what reason is that generally what, what he's talking about? He's talking about um, understanding how God's grace um, has uh, been poured out on him so that he is a uh, Minister, ministering to the Gentiles, and he has passed on how God has rescued him and how, um, because of God's grace, um, that, that he has been uh, shown some incredible things. And the reason why he's been shown these incredible things is to pass it on to them, but that he would have to suffer. And so it says, and actually, so we go back at 13, whenever we see the word for this reason, we have to ask ourselves, well, what reason? What reason he's talking about? It says in verse 13, I ask you, therefore, do not be discouraged because of my sufferings for you, which are your glory. And so for this reason, I kneel before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth derives its name. I pray that out of his glorious riches, that he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have power together with all the Lord's holy people to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ, and to know that this love that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. Paul writes, and, 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 and for whatever reason, um, Paul wanted the Ephesians to know, and he uses some remarkable descriptions, some adjectives. A number of times, if you were to see in Ephesians 1, Ephesians 2, Ephesians 3, he uses the word incomparable, that, that there is nothing like it. That's the whole idea. It's incomparable. You cannot compare it to something else. That being in Christ, that the fact that Christ now dwells in our hearts, there is nothing like it. There's nothing to compare it to. And then he says, I want you to understand something. That you being rooted and established in love. I don't think we can hear this enough. But the death of Christ, when he offered himself as an unblemished sacrifice on our behalf, he did not do it grudgingly. Now, it was challenging. We've talked about the fact that, um, that the highest form, perhaps, of love sometimes is not when we feel like doing something, but when we do something, even though we don't feel like it. The idea of denying yourself. But our relationship with God is marinated, is soaked in. It is absolutely, and in the word that he uses here, rooted and established in love. That God, when God thinks about us, he talks about this earlier in Ephesians, that it's according to his pleasure. It's what he wants to do, that, he, that we, we glory in his love. That when God looks at us, that he's not seeing an irritant, someone who is, 
a nuisance. And I know sometimes when we fall into sin, we think that that's the way God looks at us. And, 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 and remember what we're establishing here, though, is that who we are in Christ. And, and then later on in this letter, as he's writing them, he says, because of this, you need to act. But we're not talking about how we act, need to act right now. We're talking about who we are. That we are rooted and established in love. And then he says that you got to have power to understand this next, next concept that, uh, that, that we're going to uh, illuminate. He says, the, 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 he says, that you need to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ. And get this, here's this incomparable thing again. And to know that this love surpasses knowledge. You can't quite understand it. It is so remarkable. Mm -hmm. that you will never understand the fullness of God, the full measure, unless you understand how much God loves us. And so today, as we think about this, it doesn't matter what your morning is like, uh, has been already. I don't know if your morning has been, oh, your kids irritated you, or your dog, uh, uh, you felt like kicking the dog, or, or, or your, your spouse, or has, you've already started the morning, oh my goodness, or your boss called earlier than you expected and they're, they're giving you some unreasonable expectation and you're, you're perhaps a little bit irritated already this morning, or the coffee wasn't warm when, uh, or wasn't warm enough, or it wasn't sweet enough, or it wasn't strong enough, or, what, or your tea was, oh, whatever. It was supposed to be a uh, 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 flavor tea, and this morning it was just black tea. Ah, I have no idea. But the idea that I want for us to flow, to marinate, for us to be rooted in us, and we'll talk about this for the next maybe week or so, is who we are, and that we are truly, truly, truly deeply loved by God. And to grasp how long and wide and deep this love is. In other words, spend some time today in reflection. Not a cursory thought. Not a fleeting thought. But some moments of reflection. And so I'm going to ask you guys for a couple of minutes here. Okay? For us to encourage us this, each other this morning. One of the things about the Ottawa Church sometimes, and honestly, I think the sisters are a little better than the, at this than the brothers, but hey man, we'll catch up. And it's this, the, the, don't think about a well-formed thought when a question is answered. Sometimes we're a little insecure about, or I don't know all the reasons why we don't share what we would like to do. But what do you think about the love, the depth and the, the length and the, and the width and how deep and established in love. How do you see that God loves you? Like what is the way that God, through his word and what he's done for us and what he's done to us, whatever, whatever way, how would you describe that length, breadth, and, and depth of the love of God? What are some things, words, not, not too long, maybe a sentence or two, or even a word. 